Today, I wanna to talk about five things that I wish I knew when I began learning about color grading. These are mistakes that could cause you a lot of pain and headaches, so I hope these are things you can avoid. The first problem that I see is not using solid color management. If you haven't really dug into color science and color pipelines, I understand this can feel confusing, but you are in for a world of hurt if you try doing this by hand. And it actually could be a lot simpler than you might believe. I have a preference of doing color management through nodes manually, but you don't have to do it that way. Resolve has a built-in auto color management solution. If you go up to Color Science, uh, flip it over to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. Uh, I like unticking automatic color management and just selecting uh, DaVinci's wide gamut intermediate. And then select your output color space. Uh, if, if you're set up and calibrated for Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, that's your solution right there. Uh, hit save and you will be all set up. And now if even that feels too intimidating, there's actually an even more simple way you can do this. So this here is some footage that came from a Blackmagic camera. Every camera manufacturer will supply their solution to go from their log to display space, to something like Rec. 709. So right here, uh, this LUT is Blackmagic's uh, Gen 5 color science to Rec. 709 LUT. If all this color science feels really intimidating to you, a great first step would be download the default LUT conversion for whatever log you're working in to the, the Rec. 709 display space and add that to the end to be your color science. And then what you can do is just make adjustments upstream of that node. Now right now, this is manual node-based color management. And you'll notice in the project settings, I still have, uh, I'm not on the automatic version, just DaVinci YRGB. If you do do this, right, right now, uh, we're essentially gonna be working in the Gen 5 color science for Blackmagic. I would encourage you, whatever, your, whatever space you're gonna be working in, go ahead and update it to that. So for, for us, I would do the, uh, the Gen 5 color science. I would select that and hit save. The really big thing you want to avoid is using LUTs that don't match the correct input. So this is Blackmagic Gen 5 color science. Uh, let's say that you really like uh, airy cameras. I, I've just seen instances where someone will drop, you know, like an airy LUT or they'll say, ooh, I want this to look filmic. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go over to the uh, the film looks in Resolve and uh, drop this LUT on there. And oh, you know, it feels a little too much. So I'm gonna, you know, back out the gain a little bit, just, you know, decrease the opacity on that. Please, for the love of all that is holy, don't do that. Just stick with a solid color management process. You will get yourself into so much trouble if you are feeding LUTs the wrong input. Keep it simple, stick to a solid color management pipeline. The second problem I see is when people grade sequentially. They'll sit down with their project, they'll open it up, and they'll start at shot number one. They'll grade shot number one, make sure it looks nice, maybe they'll use some power windows, do some color correction, and when they're happy with it, then they move to shot number two and they do the same thing and they continue through the project. One of the problems you can run into is what I like to call look drift. And that is if you're only grading shots from one to the next in kind of a sequential order, sometimes your grading will start to drift in one direction. Maybe you'll drift to higher saturations or higher contrast in a way where when you jump back to the beginning, you'll notice, oh, this, this look is not consistent over the course of the scene. So rather than grading sequentially, what you really need to do is you need to find, when you're, when you're kind of looking to set the look for the scene, pick a hero shot. For example, this image that I have up here would be a great example of a hero shot. This is not the first clip in the scene, but it's showing us one of our lead actors in the scene. It shows their skin tone, their outfit, some of the set decoration in the background, and you can craft your look off of this shot. Then you save it as a still, and as you are grading the rest of the scene, you're always checking back at this one anchor point. Look building can be really tough. I wrestled with it for years to develop the skill. If you wanna get better at it, you can check out my free simple guide for look building. In a few minutes, you will get a solid foundation to build off of and grow with. The third problem that I sometimes see is when people use too many LUTs or looks inside one project. One of the surefire ways that I know if someone is a newer colorist or doesn't have a lot of experience is if each scene of the movie feels like completely different movies because they're swapping LUTs on a scene by scene basis. So here's an example. Let me uh, disable the color for a moment. So I have these two clips from the same project. Now these are two separate scenes inside this project, but they should exist within the same world. Now let's say I use one LUT for this scene, but then when I go to the next scene, I use a completely different LUT. Well, as I kind of go back and forth between these, 
You'll see there's not some sort of congruent through line of the look. They look like completely different projects. And you know, this LUT isn't bad. Like I, I kind of like some of the stuff it's doing. And when I look at this clip, I go, okay, you know, it's kind of interesting, kind of blue, a little more uh, desaturated in the look. But when you combine them together in a piece, it, it, it doesn't create one cohesive whole for a project. So can I encourage you, rather than using many different looks on many different scenes, find one LUT or look or develop it yourself that will work over either the whole project or many, many, many scenes. You would be far better off and you would get a far better result if I, I'm gonna copy this LUT, copy the first LUT, you know, disable that and start at a base of the same look being applied over both scenes. And then if you need to make adjustments to this scene, maybe you want this scene to be warmer. Absolutely, right? You know, maybe go ahead, grab that offset and warm the scene up a little bit. However, now as we compare these two, you'll notice they fit much closer together. We have a more common aesthetic for the film because we're not changing the LUT every scene. If your LUT or your look isn't working across the whole film, that is probably a sign that whatever you have chosen or whatever you are doing is too strong. Back it off, find a more subtle way of doing it. Maybe take out a few elements of it. Choose something more subtle that will work across a larger variety of the footage. The next mistake I often see is making color correction too complex. Now maybe it's there's this technical side of us that really wants to find like complex solutions to problems, but so often we just need to choose the simplest tool for the job. And as you go about doing color correction, there's an important mentality to keep in mind. Your primary goal is not to have some sort of forensic perfect match between two different shots. Your primary goal is to make sure you are balancing for the subject of the frame. Make sure their skin tone looks good, the contrast seems about right. Audiences can forgive a lot of things if the subject of the frame is looking good. If the sun's changing and your background looks a little bit different, don't worry about that first. Get the subject in a good spot, and then make some adjustments. And if you feel like you fall into this trap of making color correction too complex, here are three tools to start with when you're doing color correction. Offset, gain, and saturation. You will be surprised at how much you can do with just these three tools. Let's start with offset. Offset is one of the oldest tools we have in color correction. It's a great way for adjusting things that they need to feel a little brighter or darker, as well as just balancing out the image. You need to feel a little cooler, easy to do, a little warmer, right? You need to correct out some magenta or something like that. Uh, offset is a great way to go. And then when you combine gain and offset, so let's say I uh, gain up and offset down. What I've just done is I've just increased contrast. That's what these two do. Just to demo this real quick, take a look at this waveform. I'm gonna gain up, that's gain, and then I'm gonna offset down, right? Look, I've just increased contrast. That's how it works. Between offset, gain, and saturation, you can get a lot of work done. And I'm not saying those are the only color correction tools that exist, but if you're looking to start, those are really good places to begin. For the fifth and last one today, I'm gonna to call out not finding and fixing conform issues before starting. Oh my goodness, the headaches and the time I have spent when I miss an issue early on. Let me show you a really easy way to do this. So for this short film, they provided a reference export for the edit. And what you could do is you can right click that file and add it as an offline reference clip. Now I've already done that, I have a ref folder here. I added that as an offline reference clip. And then in the edit page, you can select your timeline and say timelines, uh, link offline reference clip and then select the reference clip you've added and what that allows you to do is I'm gonna hit control W because I'm on a Windows PC here but you can actually preview the reference clip right on top of your timeline and you can just start you know hopping through the timeline making sure things are lining up and if you see something wacky like you know if for some reason there's a scaling issue, something's not lining up, it's way easier to find it like this. So often what I'll do is just do a little split screen and hop through the project to make sure things are lining up properly here. And because I've already done the conform pass on this, things are lining up nicely. If you want to dig a bit deeper into color grading, I actually did a deep dive into split toning, which is one of the core building blocks of a look. Check it out here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know down in the comments. Also, if you don't want to miss future content like this, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell. And if you found this video helpful, hitting the like button helps this video reach more people. All right, I'll see you in the next one.